Hey everybody, Miss C here, and today we're going to take some notes on the strengths of acids and bases. We're going to talk about conjugate acid and bases, and then we're also going to look at pH calculations. So a quick intro to acids and bases. So in AP Chem, we focus mostly on bronsted lowry acids and bases, and the bronsted lowry definition of an acid and base has to do with where the acidic hydrogen or proton is located. So acids will donate a hydrogen ion because they have that acidic hydrogen ion. That's what makes them an acid. And then bases are going to accept that acidic hydrogen from the acid. And then that is their interaction back and forth. Then what we can do is we can then make in our products a conjugate acid. So this is the product that has the hydrogen ion. And because it has that acidic hydrogen ion or proton, if you were to go in the reverse direction, then that would act as the acid in the reverse direction. So we can say that we've made it into an acid, so we've conjugated it into an acid. Similarly, we can have a conjugate base. This is the product that no longer has the hydrogen ion. And again, if we were to go in the reverse direction, it would act as a base in that direction. So let's take a look at our example here. We have H2SO4, which we know as sulfuric acid. NH3, which is ammonia, and then we can see it. this is, well, it should be, it is a double arrow because this can exist in equilibrium, which is why we do acids and bases after equilibrium. Um, and we can see that we make HSO4, and this has a minus here, and then NH4 plus. So I want to be able to identify my acid and base reactants, and then my conjugate acid and conjugate base products, and then we have acid base, conjugate acid, conjugate base pairs. So we can see here that my, or my sulfuric acid starts with two hydrogens and then loses one hydrogen. And then my ammonia, my NH3, goes from three hydrogens to four. So what happens is the hydrogen from my sulfuric acid gets donated to my ammonia to make this guy plus my ammonium ion. So therefore, my acid is my H2SO4. Ammonia acts as a base because it receives the hydrogen. And then in my products, I need to look for my conjugate acid, conjugate base. So here, this guy has lost the hydrogen. It no longer has that acidic hydrogen. So this is my conjugate base. And then ammonia, NH3, that now has my acidic hydrogen. So this is the conjugate acid. So we have our conjugate acid base pairs. So my acid with my conjugate base and then my ammonia NH3 with my NH4 plus. The other type of molecule we can have is something that's amphoteric and just like a amphibian um, has a similar prefix on the front. It can exist as two things. So an amphoteric molecule can exist as both an acid or a base in water, and an or an acid or a base, and water is an example of this. So we can see that water, H2O, it can lose its acidic hydrogen, so one of the hydrogens can pop off, or hydrogen or water can receive an acidic hydrogen to make H3O+, which we call hydronium. And so when you see a especially strong acids dissociating water, Typically, we ignore the water, um, but in reality, when a strong acid dissociates in water, that acidic hydrogen from the acid is going to pair up with the water and make hydronium. So sometimes you might see hydronium. Other times, you might just see it as H+, plus, um, because that's more of a shortcut for that. So just know that you might see one or the other, but this has to do with the hydrogen ions in the water. So one thing that you can be asked to do is just given the formula, you can be asked to figure out the conjugate base or the conjugate acid. So HF, the conjugate base of an acid, we know has lost the hydrogen ion. So the conjugate base for hydrofluoric acid is just F minus, and we cannot forget about our charge. Remember, hydrogen has a plus one charge, so if I get rid of it, I'm losing one. Similarly, H3PO4, so phosphoric acid, I'm going to lose one of my hydrogens, so I'm going to have H2PO4 with a minus one charge. 
Going the opposite direction, given the conjugate acid for each of the following. So conjugate acid has gained an acidic hydrogen. So instead of Br, hydrogens always go first. So HBr, instead of HSO4 minus, I'm going to have H2SO4. Okay, so you'll be given reactions and you'll be asked to figure out the or identify the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. And all we need to do is follow where our hydrogen goes. Next, we can talk about the strength of acids and bases, which we've alluded to a little bit, um, but we haven't formally talked about. So strong acids and base ionize 100%, which means they fully dissociate in water or other solutions. So we say they fully dissociate. That means that if I know my strong acid is going to um, break down, so I can write a strong acid as HA, is my acidic hydrogen plus my acid. So HA, whoops, HA, my random strong acid, when it dissociates in water, we're going to draw a singular arrow because it is just going to dissociate, right? It's not going to come back. It's very much wants to break apart. So it's going to break apart into its hydrogen ions and my A minus, so my anion ions. Whatever my concentration was of my acid, so X molar, that is going to completely go down. And if I start with zero of both my products, looks kind of like an ice table, right? This is going to completely go away. It's going to dissociate completely. And so these are going to increase by that concentration. So that means my final concentration of my hydrogen ions is equal to the concentration of my acid. So, so many molarity. Okay, so my hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the concentration of my acid only if it's a strong acid. And same thing for a base, strong bases, my um, thing here, you could write it as, you could write it as BOH. Same thing, hydroxide ions with B, which is your cation, 100% ionizes, makes them a strong electrolyte. Okay, electrolytes are things that you have in Gatorade and Propel. They are ions in solution. So we're making tons of ions in solution. Uh, you want to know your strong acids and your strong bases. Strong acids especially will come up on the AP exam and you'll want to identify them. Most times they're going to see hydrochloric acid, um, nitric, and sulfuric, but the other ones could come up too. And then these are your strong bases. So oppositely, weak acids and bases do not ionize completely in water and are weak electrolytes. So there's hardly any in there. For weak acids and bases, if I have my weak acid, so again we'll say HA, is going to dissociate and it's going to partial, like some of it will dissociate, but it'll be partial into hydrogen ions and its anion. Because it's a weak dissociation, some of it will, we are more likely and we will get an equilibrium here between my weak acid which means if I start, let's say, with two molar of my weak acid and I put it in my solution and I want it to dissociate, it's going to decrease by some amount. These are going to increase by some amount, but the amount that this decreases by is usually pretty negligible. And in order to figure out my equilibrium concentrations, I need to know my Ka for my weak acids or my Kb for my weak bases to solve for that. And we'll do that in two days. Um, so you'll take some notes on that tomorrow, actually, about Ka and Kb. So the most popular weak acid you'll come across, this is acetic acid, um, carbonic acid, which is in soda that you drink, um, hydrocyanic acid, hydrofluoric acid. And then weak bases, the one that's going to come up most of the time is ammonia and H3. All right, cruising right along. pH. So pH is something that you have probably heard of before. You for sure have talked about it in middle school science, um, but you haven't gotten into like why it is what it is. 
But we know that pH is a scale that tells us the concentration of hydrogen ions. POH will tell us the concentration of hydroxide ions. Okay, will tell us that, not equal to, but will tell us. Okay. Um, our pH scale, we have from 0 to 14. In real life, this number can get less than 0 and greater than 14, but we were only going to deal with the 0 to 14. We know that 7 is a pH that is neutral, so that's in our middle. A pH less than 7 is acidic. A pH greater than 7 is basic. Your pOH is the opposite of pH. So a pH of 0 is a pOH of 14. And if 14 is your pH, your pOH is 0. So it's flipped. We can also look at the hydrogen ion concentration given our pH. And we'll talk about how we calculate that down here. But our hydrogen ion concentration at a pH of 0 is 1 times 10 to the negative 0. At 7, 1 times 10 to the negative 7. At 14, 1 times 10 to the negative 14. If there's whole numbers, we can have 1 times 10 to the negative pH. Notice that as I change my pH, I have a factor of 10 change each time. So a pH of 7 to 6, this would have hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 6. So that is a factor of 10 each time or a 10-fold change in hydrogen ion concentration. So there is not a small change, but rather a large change between a pH value. Okay, that's quite a bit of hydrogen ions in solution. And then if you start talking about going from like a pH of 2 to a pH of 6, well, 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6, well, that's 10, 100, 1,000. That's a 10,000 change in terms of hydrogen ion concentration. So it gets really big really fast. We can determine pH by using a pH meter. Uh, college chemistry, you'll use one of those. Um, you can use an indicator that changes colors in a certain pH range, such as like phenylphthalein turns pink in a base, and we've used that in our titrations. And then you can also perform a titration with a known uh, solution and figure out the hydrogen ion concentration, right? Figure out concentration of one, and then do some titration calculations to figure out the concentration of the other one and therefore the pH. So in terms of doing these calculations, on your reference table with equilibrium, acids and bases fall under our equilibrium section. And we are going to focus on these here, OK? Um, we will also use this guy a little bit as well, OK? I would suggest drawing your pH square over here on the side. In my pH square, on my corners, I have pH. POH, hydrogen ion concentration, and hydroxide ion concentration. So it's like a mole town for acid-base calculations. My relationship between pH and POH is pH plus POH equals 14, which we see here. My relationship between hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration is hydrogen ion concentration times hydroxide ion concentration equals 10 or 1 times 10 to the negative 14, which has a fancy name as the dissociation constant of water. So that is here. To go from hydrogen ion to pH and pOH to hydroxide ion concentration, we're going to use this formula here. So my pH value, so if I want to know the pH, but I know my hydrogen ion concentration, the negative log of my hydrogen ion concentration equals my pH value. If I want to go the other direction, if I want my hydrogen ion concentration, but I know my pH, the opposite of log on your computer, on your computer, on your calculator is 10 to the, and these are negative logs. So 10 to the negative pH will get you your hydrogen ion concentration and similarly for your pOH. So I would pause this and put this down on here. You can use it. It's a good tool. Um, obviously you won't have it on your actual exam, but by that point you'll be so good at it, you won't need it. All right. So if I have a pH of 3.5 and I want to find the pOH. I know that pOH plus pH equals 14. So if I want pOH, 14 minus pH, 14 minus 3.5 is 10.5. So 10.5 is my pOH. No units on pH or pOH. I feel like blue is hard to read. 
Now going the opposite direction, hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative 4. We know that pH, what I'm looking for is pH. I'm looking for pH. I know hydrogen ion concentration. So the negative log, 1 times 10 to the negative 4. Now if I have my base of 1, I can just pull off this number. And negatives cancel out, so my pH equals 4. If this number is not 1, I have to plug in my calculator. And I would do that by typing negative log 1 times 10, so then I go to 4, and I get 4. Now in this situation, we're going to calculate the pOH of my solution if my hydrogen ion concentration is 6.1 times 10 to the negative 6. So hydrogen ion concentration, 6.1 times 10 to the negative 6. I want pOH. So I have hydrogen ion concentration. I want pOH. I like to ignore this part because it's just more scientific numbers to plug in my calculator. So I'm going to go this direction. So I'm going to find pH first and then subtract from 14 to get pOH. So pH negative log. I'm trying to beat the bell. So negative log. 5.21, so pOH, 14 minus 5.21, gives me 9 point something, sorry, 8 point something, 8.8, .8. and that's my final answer. Number four says, what is the pH if I have a two molar hydrochloric acid solution? Remember, hydrochloric acid is one of our strong acids, so it fully dissociates into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. So remember, the two molar hydrochloric acid solution is also two molar for my concentration of hydrogen ions. So my hydrogen ion concentration is two. So my pH is going to be one Oops, my pH is the negative log of 2. So my pH, negative log of 2, and I get negative 0 0.301. Like I said, you can have negative values. So super duper acidic. All right. Um, so we will practice this um, in class tomorrow, and then we'll continue on with weak acids and bases as well.